بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بإحسان لنا يوم الدين أما بعض فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وسارعوا إلى مغفرة من ربكم وجنة أرضها السماوات والأرض أعدت للمتقين الذين ينفقون في السراء والضراء والكاظمين الغيظ والعافين عن الناس والله يحب المحسنين وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اتقوا النار ولو بشق تمرة وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الصدقة تطفئ الخطيئة كما يطفئ الماء النار صدق الله العظيم وصدق الرسول النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين Respected brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh In the history of Islam, there has always been a pattern of how Islam grows and how Islam spreads and how Islam rises in a specific area, in a specific locality, in a country, in a place. Many of us who are sitting here, we are, you know, it, it was in our destiny or it was in the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Many of us migrated here from other places. And this mass migration of Muslims, and even today we see this mass migration of Muslims forever, well, for whatever reason it might be, Allah Azza wa Jal has a system by which people get pushed, Muslims who are in comfort, Muslims who are living in, at ease. They are made to, by Allah's decree, by certain calamities that come about. We see the Syrian war, how the Syrian war, subhanAllah, has pushed out so many of our beloved brothers and sisters from there and made them to be moved to other places. Also in Afghanistan, you know, 40 years ago, the war caused so many people to spread throughout the world so different situations and different happenings. In the Mongol times, similar things happened where people were forced to go from one place to another to make the hijrah. So for whatever reason it may have been, people were compelled to migrate. People were compelled to move from one place to another. And this was a system and the, 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 the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many of us, that if we we're not in a situation of war, we were not in a situation of difficulty or hardship, we were not in a situation of uh, hardship and comfort, then what would have happened? Many of us would have stayed in those places. But this is the divine will of Allah Azza wa Jal that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala pushed us, or many of us that, is, that are here, compelled us, made us migrate, and now we are settled. Similarly, this is a continuous pattern that we see. Now what happens is some people who migrate, they go and they end up in certain places. They assimilate, they melt in. They're not concerned about some of their important values. They might not be concerned about their deen, their religion, or whatever it might be. After one generation, after two generations, they're gone. You cannot even recognize that these people at one time were Muslims. We see this happening in many places, and we see this happening, unfortunately, with many migrants that have just come here when they don't connect with the right community or they end up somewhere far away from the Muslim community. Or they end up amongst themselves, but they're not making fikr, they're not concerned about spending in Allah's way, in establishing the deen, in iqamatul deen, in the preservation of their identity as Muslims, in the preservation of their religion, in the preservation of their values. What happens after one generation we see, slowly that starts slipping away from them. 
In the second and the third generation, you see that nothing is left. What are you? I think my parents were Muslim. I guess, yeah, but I don't know. I don't really care. This is now the result. This is why my brothers and sisters, Allah Azza wa mentions in the Quran something amazing. He says, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَهَاجَرُوا وَجَاهَدُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ Those who believed, those who migrated, and those who struggled in the way of Allah. So we believed, alhamdulillah, wherever we were, we were practicing, we were depending on whatever was in our environment, whatever was around us, the masajid, the community, whatever. Now we were compelled to hajaru. We were compelled to migrate. We were compelled to leave our homes. We were compelled to leave that which we were acquainted with, we were comfortable with. Wahajaru. After hijrah, they just don't go and make hijrah and they say, okay, I'm just going to be concerned about putting food on the table for my children. Brothers and sisters, this is something very, very important, but we have to understand as, as parents, as elders, as people who are, you know, we, we have a legacy, we want to perpetuate our generations. We want to perpetuate our legacy. When you think about what do you want to leave behind when you've passed away? When you think about this, what is it that you want to leave behind when you leave this world? Do you want to leave behind children that don't even know what is Islam? Children that don't pray, children that don't even know La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Wallahi, this is the most like saddening thing. This is the most depressing thing that I can think about. That after my demise, my legacy, my progeny, they will not know La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. For me, this is the most depressing, this is the most grieving thing. Is that my progeny, my children, the ones who have come from my my loins, the one who has come from me, that they should be people who say, I don't know what is Islam. I don't know what is Iman. I think my parents were Muslim or something. I don't know. Brothers and sisters, how can we protect ourselves from that? When we come to make a better life for ourselves, I know that many of our brothers and sisters, mashallah, they're immigrants. This is the thing that I have... I have uh, advised many of our immigrant brothers and sisters. What have I told them? I said, I know you are looking for a better life. And it is, it is your duty to provide that for your family. But you have to understand is, not only is it your duty to put food in their stomachs and to pay the rent, and this is something, that this is a challenge, but life is challenging. We have to also simultaneously be thinking that these mouths that I'm feeding, what are they going to become? Are they going to become Balai John? These mouths that I'm feeding, are they going to become a calamity upon me? Are they going to become a musibah upon me? Are they going to become something that will be a means of entering into Jahannam because of me? Then this is a major problem. I don't want to be feeding mouths that are going to be sending me to the hellfire. And I don't want to be feeding mouths that are going to be, you know, a, a musibah and a calamity upon me. I want to be feeding mouths that is going to be an honor for me. I want to be feeding mouths that is going to be the perpetuation of my legacy, of what I want to do. We could do this. And it is possible. Anything that we make an effort to, anything that we put our mind to and come together as a community, we can make that happen. In some places, subhanAllah, that certain families haven't even been here for a year or two. They've already lost their kids. They're losing their children. Because in their mind, there is one thing. That money is the solution to everything. If I'm able to put food in the t on the table, and if I'm able to send them to school, and that's it. This is, this is going to be the solution to the problem. This is not the solution to the problem. There is jihad that is required. Wa jahadu. Jahadu. There is a juhud that is required. وَجَاهَدُوا Allah Azza wa Jal says بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ With their wealth and with their selves. Some of these places that many of the new Afghan immigrants that have come, children, are, they're lost. Some of the children don't know what to do because they're not connected with the right community. Or the masa they're not close to those masajid. Automatically, solely, in maybe a couple of years, the children don't know, the, the parents don't care, or they do care, and they're just trying to, you know, pay the rent and fulfill their needs. 
But brothers and sisters, this is what I'm, this is the point that I'm mentioning, is establishing and thinking about our children that we're working night and day for them. Our progeny, that we are putting food in their mouths and, you know, paying rent to keep a roof over their heads. But what about them? What are they going to become for us? And now comes this, this is the main point. Now comes this, that that mujahada, that struggle, has to be in the institutions and the establishments that is going to make them, that is going to preserve them, that is going to provide them that education, that morality to make them something. Many of our immigrant brothers and sisters who came 30, 40 years ago, they think that like, you know, school here is like school in Afghanistan. You put them in school and the, the teacher is gonna, you know, check their nails. If, the, if their nails are cut properly, check their hair. Check that they're, you know, nice clothes that they're wearing and everything is proper. They don't do that in school, brother. This is not Afghanistan and this is not back home. Now, parents do not have a say in the gender that the kids want to choose for themselves. Wake up and smell the coffee. This is what we're dealing with now. So don't have this in your mind, like maybe you think that in Afghanistan you send them and then automatically like, you know, the, the, the teacher is taking, the teacher is like a second parent. The teacher is like a, taking responsibility for the faith, for the morals, for the character, for the adab and the akhlaq of those children. They don't care about no adab and akhlaq. They have no concern about that. Actually, this you have to believe. And this you have to have in your mind that when you're sending them there, you are sending them to the middle of a, like you're sending them to the middle of a battlefield with with gunfire from every side, bombs dropping from every direction. This you have to expect that. Don't have this thought that you're sending them there and you're going to get Subhanallah, uh, Waliullah, or Imam Ghazali coming back out from school. Imam Ghazali ain't going to be coming for you from that school, from that from that environment. From this we understand, brothers and sisters, Subhanallah. The organizations that we have, the Islamic schools that we have, the masajid that we have, and what, mashallah, the, the, the community has been thinking about and the community has been establishing in the Bay Area, it has, been a, it has been a great blessing. It has been a game changer. Because what is happening in this masjid and in other masajid, mashallah, and in our entire area, this is something that we have to take into consideration and understand the importance of this. That if we did not have this, and if we fail to preserve, and if we fail to upkeep these, mashallah, institutions and these organizations, this is exactly what we're going to be doing, leaving them for what the environment is going to do to them. What is the environment going to do to them? Even the people who don't have faith, even the communities that are not Muslim communities, they are being shocked at with what speed this insanity is going of what is happening to children. And what's, what direction they're being taken and how they're morally at being, being destroyed. How the moral upbringing and the moral understanding and spiritually this is the, an entire society is being destroyed. And they're, they're being guinea pigs. They are guinea pigs. They're testing these things on this generation. You will see 15, 20 years later, the destruction that this had caused, the insanity that this has caused. Amongst teenagers, the suicide rate has increased like exponentially, right? Like crisis. They're not even, they used to say midlife crisis. Now you have teenage crisis. People don't, they have no objective and they don't know what, what they're living for and now they're getting, you know, a, a, a sex change and they're doing all of these things and still it is not giving them satisfaction. They're changing their gender and they're changing their, their uh, uh, identity and they're doing all of these various things and there's just completely dissatisfaction, complete, uh, you know, grief and depression, widespread. But by Allah's fadl and by Allah's karam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us iman as Allah has given us. We are not confused. By Allah's grace, we are blessed that wherever we establish this, wherever we set up this system, in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, there was the masjid. In the masjid, subhanallah, the iman of the people will be preserved. 
There was the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ. There was teaching and learning. And there was the remembrance of Allah. There was ibadah. There was worship. There was the madrasa of the Prophet ﷺ. Like this, an entire generation was brought up that not only were they preserved with all the kufr and the shirk that was around them, in the time when there was 360 idols inside of the Kaaba, in that time, but such a system they established, such a community they established, that what? SubhanAllah, not only did they preserve themselves, they strengthened themselves to such an extent that now they started to guide the rest of the world. Islam from that small community in Medina Munawwara spread throughout the entire world. And this didn't happen just like that, brothers and sisters. This happened with a lot of struggle, with a lot of infaq fi sabilillah, with a lot of spending, with a lot of sacrifice from their selves and their wealth. I wanted to give that in this particular masjid and some of the programs that we have here that are happening, just so you understand, subhanAllah, the value of what is going on. The Sunday maktab and the weekend maktab that we have, which is a place where the children come and learn about their deen. The Sunday and the maktab and the weekend maktab, total enrollment is 325 children. 325 children. The daily maktab, where the kids come and they learn, and the Sunday maktab where boys and girls are coming and learning their deen. An example of this, of a part-time daily maktab, one student, Abdurrahman, memorized 19 juz of the Qur'an. 19 juz, where he's coming after school. He's coming to the masjid, it's an after-school program. This is being provided, where 19 juz of the Qur'an, this young man has memorized, along with being in the battlefield. Yes, he has to go. You have to go to school. But if a person, you know, we don't say isolate, but we say insulate. You can't isolate yourself. But at least you can do is insulate yourself. But how do you insulate? You have to have the proper program. You have to have the proper system in order to do that. Another young girl, Anya, she memorized nine juz. This is a sister, a young girl. One of our young sisters, nine Jews of the Qur'an with part-time after-school program that's happening here. Our other sisters, Zahra, Hani, Khadija, each of them memorized six Jews part-time. And another young sister, Amina, she memorized three Jews in this part-time program. I'm talking about after-school. They have a whole day of school. So these are parents that are concerned. And these are parents that are saying, okay, this is the legacy that I want. Now these children, we're not thinking about them now. We're thinking about them 15 years from now, when they become parents. Somebody who doesn't have anything, what are they going to give? This is my point. We need to give our children, why? So that when they become parents, they are able to give. فَاقِدُ الشَّيْءِ لَا يُعْطِي فَاقِدُ الشَّيْءِ لَا يُعْطِي Somebody who doesn't have something, they cannot give anything. When a father and mother don't know Qur'an, when a father and mother don't know La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, when a father and mother, they don't pray, they don't fast, what will they give their kids? And this is why we want our kids to know this now, so that when they reach that age, right, when we are gone from this world, they continue this legacy, because this is the most important thing for us brothers and sisters. When I am Surah Baqarah is a, is a reminder of this, أَمْ كُنْتُمْ شُهَدَاءَ إِذْ حَضَرَ يَعْقُوبَ الْمَوْتِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Muslims, Allah is making khitab, أَمْ كُنْتُمْ شُهَدَاءَ إِذْ حَضَرَ يَعْقُوبَ الْمَوْتِ Were you present when Yaqub a.s. was on his deathbed? Allah ta'ala is talking about Yaqub, Jacob, the, son of, the, the father of many prophets. إِذْ قَالَ لِبَنِيهِ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ مِنْ بَعْدِي he said to his sons, Oh my sons, who are his sons? The sons of a prophet. Who was the son of a prophet? Who was the son of a prophet? Can you imagine? And he's saying what? He is worried on his deathbed about nothing else. What will you worship after I leave this world? What will be your, what will be your religion? What will be your, your, your way? What, what direction will you take? Who will you worship? What will be your path? That was his only concern at his deathbed. This is the concern of a prophet. Imagine us. And he's telling his sons, who are also the sons of prophets. 
قال نعبد الهك واله ابائك ابراهيم واسحاق ويعقوب الها واحدا all, all our father we're going to worship your, your lord and the lord of abraham and the lord of our forefathers ونحن له مسلمون and we are muslims to him we have submitted ourselves to him he said okay now i can rest in peace you know they say when somebody passes away rip Rest in peace. You can only rest in peace when you have done your job as a parent. This Yaqub salam, the Prophet of God, at his deathbed, his main concern was this. This masjid, this maktab, this madrasa, subhanallah, it is a miracle and it is a blessing of Allah Azza wa Jal. That this light cannot be blown out. In the morning, full-time hivs, we have 61 students, mashallah. Morning. Some examples, subhanAllah, young girls that have memorized 23 juz, 6 juz, 13 juz, and ma mashallah, walhamdulillah, uh, young boy Salim from the boys program, he just completed and he was our first Hafiz al Quran from this program. Alhamdulillah. And it has only been a year or so that we have started this program. Alhamdulillah, we have our first Hafiz al Quran from this masjid, from this program, by Allah's Fadl and Karam. We have an Alamiya program, where a seven-year program where the students are studying Quran and Hadith and Sharia. Ah. And we have students, mashallah, eight of them from age 15 to above that, 40 and above. And mashallah, there in two years that they have, we started this about two years ago. In two years, they are now able to translate the Quran completely on their own. They are doing the tafsir and the translation of the Qur'an and now they can translate the Qur'an completely on their own. By Allah's grace and mercy. There's a Qur'anic Arabic intensive three days a week from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Working class people are coming to this. One of our students, Brother Kevin, who is I think above 60, he comes all the way from San Francisco to come to this an evening program that we have in Arabic language. And subhanAllah, we have some of the students that 77 years of age. They are coming for the evening Quranic intensive program. And mashallah, every, uh, uh, every day, every quarter, there's programs, durus, mashallah, hadith, uh, tafsir that's going on in the masjid. Brothers and sisters, this is something that when we think about the need that this is fulfilling, and we understand that how important our generations and our future is. When we really look at this, subhanAllah, this is something that, this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the question is, what are we contributing? Do we know what is happening also? SubhanAllah, this same classroom in which the students are studying, during the rains, there was such a leak in there that it was leaking. The entire uh, uh, room was covered with water. All these windows that we see here inside of this masjid where the children every day study the hymns of the Qur'an, you can see, you can see with your own eyes. It's molded and it's cracking and it's falling apart. Where is the, I'm, I'm mentioning this because some of the brothers actually said, Shaykh, we want to know what can we do. We want to know what is happening. This, this building and the building over there, these are cracked windows, roofs that are leaking. And so much effort of the deen is happening. It's a sad situation for me to have to actually say. But this is our, you know, we are giving something and then the community is receiving something. Subhanallah. I think it's something very worthy to receive. Wallahi al-Azim. There are people that have violin lessons they are providing. Piano lessons they are providing. Math tutoring that they are providing. And then there's people that are dedicated to providing iman and akhlaq and morality and preserving the generations to come. This is definitely worthy of everything that we, should, we can put inside of it. Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan, I wanted to mention, in the time of need, the community needed a well. Was a, this is a very famous incident called the incident of Bi'r Ruma. That there was a Yahudi, he had a well. And all the other wells in Medina Munawwara, they were salty. The community needed it. It was a community need. So they used to go to this Yahudi and he would sell the water with a very exorbitant price. Very expensive. Selling water to people. Because all the other wells in Medina were very salty. But this one well this Yahudi had, it was sweet water and the people were forced to get it from him. Long story short, the Prophet wasallam he said that who is there that will buy this well from this Yahudi? so that the Muslim community will not be in difficulty. So that the Muslim community will be at ease and will not be suffering. 
Sayyidina Usman radiallahu anhu came in, and in the masjid was some of the Sahaba, Abu Bakr, and Zubair, and Talha ibn Ubaidullah, and he came and he said, Unshidukum billahi alladhi la ilaha illahu. He said, I, I make you a witness of, of Allah, tell me the truth. هَلْ تَعْلَمُونَ أَنَّ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم قَالَ مَنْ يَبْتَاعُ بِئْرَ رُومَةَ غَفَرَ اللَّهُ لَهُ He says, did the Prophet say this? Did anyone who buys this well, Allah Ta'ala will forgive all of his previous sins? They said, yes, we heard him say this. He went to the Prophet ﷺ and he says, I have bought this well for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He went to the Yahudi, the Yahudi said, I'm not going to sell all of it. I'm not going to sell all of it. I'll sell you half of it. So he sold him half of it at that time. And this was, subhanAllah, 8,000. 8,000 dirhams he sold it upon him. For half of it, only half. So then he goes, and the Muslims said, okay, one day we'll have, where the Muslims will go and take water for their needs, and then the next day will be yours. This is how we half this well. One day will be your taking, one day will be for our community. So the day where the Muslim community will be taking it, the next day, this person saw no water is coming in as well. He said, you ruined my well. He said, then just buy all of it. He said, how much will you sell it for me? He said, 12,000. So Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan bought the other half, for 12,000. For 20,000 dirhams, Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan, he bought this and he says, all I wanted was the forgiveness of Allah Azza wa Jal. At the, why did Sayyidina Uthman get this, brothers and sisters? Why did he attain this maqam? Why did Allah Ta'ala give him this? And in another, in the battle of Tabuk, Sayyidina Uthman, he funded the entire army, Jfijayish al-Usra, in the battle of Tabuk. And what did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say about him? He says, ما ضر أثمان ما ما عمل بعد اليوم. What Uthman, what he has done in the time of need for us, it doesn't matter what he does after this day. Allah has forgiven him. The point here, brothers and sisters, is is us spending when the time is at the time of need. All of what is happening here around you, you see. All of how important it is, you see. You know how important it is. And brothers and sisters, Subhanallah, the needs. And the necessities of the masjid, we are a masjid that we don't collect funds. We don't put a chadar and, you know, take a, a, a shawl and say, okay, you know, fill in the, you know, fill the shawls as we're sending them through the lines. We don't, we try to the best of our ability, not to mention, but so many brothers came up to me and asked me, what is happening, number one, and what can we do to help? So this is what is happening, my dear brothers and sisters, to let you know the importance of this that many of our immigrant brothers and sisters who are coming, and many of us who are not immigrant, we're all immigrant in this dunya. After we leave this world, we are going to leave our children for whatever we have trained them, whatever we have instilled in them, whatever we have passed on to them, they're going to carry the torch after us. What is going to happen to Islam after us? Do we think about that? We think Allah Ta'ala is not going to ask us about that. We think Allah brought us to America to just enjoy life out here. Subhanallah, this is just, this is our objective. Yes, while you're enjoying, enjoy life. Everybody needs a comfortable life. Everybody needs, everybody has a right to a comfortable life. Everybody has a right for, you know, to live in freedom and to live in comfort and to live at ease. Everybody has a right to education. Everybody has a right to, you know, uh, 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 medic, uh, medical and, 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 and health, health care, all these things are the human right that everybody has. But, but wallahi, brothers and sisters, in the end, the only thing that will remain, what is it that's the only thing that's going to remain when you leave in this world? You'll be thinking exactly what Yaqub a.s. was thinking. What did I leave behind? I'm not taking anything with me from this world. What did I leave behind? Your children are your photocopy. Your children are your Xerox copy. What do you want them to be to represent you? This is, mashallah, has been established. Alhamdulillah, it is a functioning masjid. It is a functioning institute. It is a functioning HIVS program. It is a functioning uh, field for all of these things that is happening. But subhanallah, it requires upkeep. This doesn't help itself. The people who are providing this, they have families. The people providing this, they also live. The people that are giving their life for this, you know, giving their life for our children, giving their life for our future, giving their life for our legacy. 
Subhanallah, I don't see anything greater than this. So brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah, this is an opportunity for us. We have our brothers that are going to be outside. This is my humble request to everybody that whatever you can. Also, we have a very simple program that you can sign up for, a dollar a day. Anybody who just does a dollar a day, where you have literally 30 bucks a day, a dollar a day, you just, you won't even notice it. But every month you are contributing to this where subhanallah children are becoming hafiz you will be getting a portion of that people will be praying salat you are getting a portion of that Talawi will be prayed khatams of quran will be made you are getting a portion of that generations are being preserved you are getting a portion of that this is easy money in the akhirah just like sayyidna uthman ibn affan brothers and sisters when he came forth at the right time allah guaranteed him maghfirah when we come forth in the right time, inshallah, Allah Ta'ala will guarantee us maqfira as well. May Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq to contribute. May Allah give us the understanding to know what situation in history we are in right now. This is a very crucial time for Muslims in America. If we make the right decisions, establish the right institutions, bring up the right people, this torch, inshallah, will be carried on. And if we just stay behind, you know what? We're going to see our own children with our own eyes leaving the deen in front of us. And this is the most grieving thing that if we don't put our mind to it and our effort to it in the right time, we might see that happening in our lifetime. But inshallah, this masjid is a perfect example and many of the other masajid in this community is a perfect example that it's happening. Good things are happening. May Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq to understand that and contribute.